Hi, welcome to week three of Art Journal Adventure. Uh, I'm super excited for this one because I love using shapes and repetitive shapes in my art journal pages and uh, one in particular that I love quite a bit are eyes. And so for this very first kit, I decided to make eyes the shape prompt. So if you get your card out here, it says, eyes can tell such a powerful story. Draw or find eyes to include in your journal page. So this is the prompt card that we will be working with today in our journal. So I have some of my supplies here. I have my um, stencil if I want to use maybe in the background. I've got my pens. I have some spray and I do also have one extra item and this is just double-sided tape um, which you could use any kind of double-sided tape that you have or glue um, if you're going to do what I'm doing here. So I'm going to show you a couple ways that you can incorporate eyes into your journal page but please um, just go with go with your gut here and do whatever feels good and right to you. If you like to draw faces or eyes, um, do that. Do that. That would be awesome. You could draw one big set of eyes, like right in the middle. You could make them go sideways. You could draw little eyes all over. You could draw a whole face um, and make the eyes maybe part, you know, the focal point. Um, I would challenge you, possibly, if you're like, no way, I don't draw faces, I'm not an eye person, I, I can't draw, try it. Just try it. You don't know until you try. And maybe this first time you do it, remember this is your art journal, so only you have to see it. And if you don't like it, you know what? You've got some gesso, you can paint right over it and do it again, you know? Or you can close the book <laughs> and no one else has to see it, but your art journal is a really great place for you to try those new things that maybe you think you're not very good at or that you just have never tried, okay? And so the first time I drew face, I, I thought that very thing, oh, look, oh no, I can't do this. <laughs> you know, I'm not a good drawer. I'm not, I can't, I can't. And I just wanna challenge you that maybe maybe there's a chance okay that you can and, I, and i'm saying that kind of in a silly way because i know that you can people only get good at things and people are only good at things because they practice them and because they they do it over and over and over again so if drawing faces or eyes is something that you're even mildly interested in i would i would challenge you to maybe try to draw some eyes on your page today but if you're if you're like nope I'm not there I don't want to do that or I just want to do something fun and different and maybe collage um, there's another way you can go and I've cut out some eyes and different fun ways uh, from magazines and so we're gonna do a little bit of both just to give you some ideas and then you can go off and do whatever works for you okay so I am going to use my stencil for a little bit of background. Just we're going to have some fun with the spray. I like to have a little bit of color on my page. And so I'm just shaking up my shimmer spray. Now this one I'm using today is called Rose Quartz. But whatever color you got in your kit would work just fine. And you know what? If you have a different stencil you want to use to make a background, do that. Um, if you don't want to have a stencil in the background at all, then do that. You could also just spray this in the background, right? Or take the, here, let me show you. You could take the nozzle out and just smush it around, right? There are no rules. You do exactly whatever you want, okay? This is a really fun way to do this. And then you could even um, take a water um, bottle and spritz it, right? This is watercolor paper, so, you know, we're, I'm just looking to get a little bit of color and a little bit of fun movement on this background to put my eyes on. I'm going to draw an eye, a set of eyes and I'm going to use these magazine pieces as well. Okay, so look at, I mean, we've already got some fun stuff going on here. Um, one way you can dry it, I keep forgetting to bring a paper towel with me, but you could use paper towel and just pat it down. You could use a heat gun to dry it. Um, I've got a towel here, my art towel. I'm just going to pick up the excess water. Now it's still a little bit wet, but that's fine. Um, and now look at how soft, 
right? So this is where, this is your journal, right? So this is where you play and you try out different backgrounds and different um, ways of using your spray. There's lots of ways to use the spray, not just spraying and not even just spraying through the stencil, you know. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do with it. So just play and have fun and experiment. And if you have a question in your head, like, oh, can I do blah? Try it. Don't ask me the question. I mean, you can, of course. I'll always help. But uh, but I challenge you to just try it yourself. If you're like, if you think in your head, hmm, um, I'm gonna ask Cassie, can I use the spray to do A, B, or C? At first, before you ask me, go and try it yourself and see what see what result you come up with. Oftentimes, I have thought those questions and thought, hmm, I'm gonna ask someone and I've just decided to try it myself and some really awesome things have come out of that. And that is how I've sort of built up my knowledge of what to do with different products. It's just been from trying it out, you know? So I just challenge you to just try it first and then if you still, you know, wanna come and ask the question, ask the group or ask me or whatever, um, of course, myself and anyone else in the group, I would say, uh, will definitely always wanna help. Okay, so we've done that in the background. I still want some of these words, just kind of like a shadow. Look at how pretty that is. And then I'm gonna flip this over like we did in a different demo. It's fun to just have <clears throat> that pattern repeating, but in a slightly different way. I think that looks really fun. And then another thing, you can spray your stencil and get a little bit more life out of it and put it back down again. So there we go. And then I think, um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spray down here one little spot because I also want to put some of this back um, opposite pattern up in this top corner. Okay, so just I'm just having these patterns repeat in different places. Okay, ooh, I love the way this looks. This is exciting. And the other thing I really love about the spray is that it's got a shimmer to it, just a, a nice shimmer once it dries. Okay, I'm going to set this aside just for one second. Normally, I would put this on another page. Well, why don't I do that, actually? I will do that. Um, when I work in my journal, <clears throat> I like to, when I, especially when I'm working with the, the stencil, um, I like to go on another page, sometimes in the middle of the book, bat, you know, wherever, and I like to um, use the rest of that pigment up. And when I get to this page, look at, it's just subtle, but it's really pretty. Um, then, um, you know, I'm going to have something to start with, uh, and it's, it's, sometimes it's just nice to not be starting with a totally white page. So look at really subtle, I'm going to bring it up close, uh, not a big deal, but just a nice little place to start. And I've used most of the pigment, uh, that was on the stencil, so nothing's getting wasted. Now, usually there's a generally a little bit that doesn't come off on the page and so I just get my art towel or whatever you're using kitchen towel or whatever and um, wipe up the rest okay so that's that I think I'm gonna be done with the spray and the stencil so I'll put those off to the side so I have a little bit more room to work I am only working on this one page man I love that pink it's so pretty <clears throat> but again if you like doing a double layout you know you want to work on both pages together oh. <laughs> um, then do that you know again there are no rules right and these videos are really just meant to give you a jumping off point and maybe a little bit of inspiration to help get you moving in uh, in a direction or get your brain you know kind of inspired in a particular direction okay so I'm gonna give this a quick dry just to make sure it's good for the next step. Okay, I think we're good. This spray does dry pretty quickly. It's a little bit wet up there, but no big deal. Okay, I've got a bunch of these that I'm going to, I think what I'm gonna do is tape down my, my magazine pieces. Um, and then, um, and then maybe draw eyes somewhere else to, to incorporate in the mix, okay? And again, you can use double-sided tape, you could use a glue stick. Ooh, I think I actually might like to use a glue stick instead. And I just thought of it, I don't know why. So I'm going to 
grab a glue stick and we'll use that. I am glad that I have both here because maybe you don't have a glue stick or maybe you don't have double sided tape. You can really use whatever you want. If you have like a tape runner like this, you know, anything that's just going to make it stick to the page. You could use scotch tape. You know, it really doesn't matter. Again, this is your journal. It's the place to play and explore and experiment. Okay. So I like to start when I have like collage type things that I'm doing. I like to start just placing the pieces and then deciding where they're going to go and then I glue them down so that I'm not committed right from the start. Sometimes, sometimes it's nice to commit from the start and just let it go where it goes and it's really interesting to see kind of what happens but today I'm going to be a little bit more intentional with the um, placement of things, okay? I love this. Look at this. This was in my Vogue magazine. I really want this to be my focal point. I think it's super cool. Um, so that is going to be right there in the top third of my page. And then I'm just going to put some supporting pieces around it. So I like that these eyes are going this way because I, I do have a page over here. <clears throat> These are Dolly Parton's eyes. I like them because they match my spray color and they're very pretty. Okay, so then I think I want to go smaller. So I've got like big, medium, and then I'm going to go smaller. I like the ones, some of the ones with glasses. I think those are pretty cool. Let's see, let's put her up here. And I guess I don't have to use all of them either but it's just kind of fun. So now I'm just making a line going up. I, I do have these fun cartoon glasses too, this cartoon eyes. I think it's from Soul, but I don't think I'm gonna use it. Um, I think I'm just gonna stick with human human eyes and glasses and stuff. So I like the I like the layout of this. This is just fun, simple, and then maybe I'll draw some eyes over here or something, maybe sideways or whatever, we'll see. Okay, so now I'm going to just stick them down and this is super easy and again, um, well, I guess not again, but your journal page doesn't need to take a lot of time either. You know, I don't want anyone to ever feel like, oh, I gotta work on my journal and I don't really have time. You know, you can spend five, 10 minutes in a journal, in your journal. Even if you just sit down for the first session of working on the eye prompt and you're like, I only have time to do the background. Let me just put some color and shapes down on the background and I'll come back and do the rest later. That's great. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely do that, okay? Do whatever feels good to you. This isn't meant to be, you know, like homework or I have to do this. Uh, I want it to be, I want this process and your experience with this journal, with this um, class, with this, with this club to really just help you grow as an artist and a creative and um, and our vehicle is an art journal, if that makes sense. I really do feel like the more that people are creative, um, the better, I mean, it, improve, it improves and helps so many areas of our lives, you know? Um, and, and it's a really important um, version of self-care. Self and um, so that is my goal with all of this, is just to help foster some really important self-care for you and um, to help you, you know, maybe get out of your head a little bit, maybe get get outside the box. I know that some people in the group are um, new to uh, art journaling and that's exciting because um, that, that was my goal, right? To invite some new people and also experts as well and people that have been doing it for a long time. But definitely I want to help people um, just feel the freedom of being able to put something down on the page and not worry about what is it going to look like when it's all done because it doesn't matter. That's not the point. Remember, the point is the process, not the final piece. Okay, so just remember that. Sorry, I got off on a little tangent there, but um, <laughs> while well, I was gluing, but I think it's really important and it's, you know, I have to tell myself the same thing all the time too, you know? Um, so, okay. All right, so now I've I've glued all these eyes down. I think this is absolutely fantastic. I totally love this. I could leave this just as it is right now and be done, and it's amazing. Um, 
but I'm gonna draw some eyes, okay? So I think, do I want eyes sideways? Uh, I'm gonna use my food ball pen. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm just thinking for a second. Yeah, maybe I'll draw some eyes over here. So I do really like to draw faces. Uh, but forever, I felt like, oh, I'm not good enough. I can't draw. I'm not a drawer. You know, I'll just leave that to other people. But then once I started practicing and doing it and, you know, watching watching people that are experts and taking their tips and incorporating them into my own style and figuring out what my style is, I mean, I'm nowhere near an expert at all <laughs> with drawing faces. But I just really like to do it. And I don't care if they're funky or wonky or, uh, you know, or... or um, or more realistic or more, you know, whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's all good, it's all fun. Okay, so I'm gonna draw some little eyes right here. And I think they'll just be my standard, fun, big kind of eyes. And I can do probably a separate lesson just on faces and how I do them. Um, so I just start with the shape and then the lid. And then one thing to know um, that's pretty important with drawing eyes, well, I mean, again, there's no rules, right? But um, one of the things that that I've learned that makes the eyes look a little bit more realistic is not to draw the full circle in the middle, um, just to leave a little bit under the lid, if that makes sense. So there's that, so I did that. And then to have a little catch, um, light. Okay, so there's one eye, and it's going to be weird to just have eyes and no nose or mouth or anything, but again, this is fun. This is good practice. And so, and my eyes are almost never like the same size, <laughs> uh, but it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. It's just fun. It's fun to practice and to play, okay? And I always give them little lashes on the side, not all the way across because I'm not good at that. And there, there's one set of eyes, okay? There's one way. It's just eyes. I'm not even going to do eyebrows. It's just fun. So this is also a fun way if you want to practice doing eyes um, and you're like, ooh, I, I, this is too much space for me to try to make eyes on my own. Just do little ones, okay? I'm going to do another set down here. <clears throat> I'm going to make these uh, a little bit different. Maybe. I'll make them big and round. And maybe I'm going to have them looking up. Okay, so then my half, my circle will be off to the side and my pupil will be there. Still have my lashes. Okay, and then they're just kind of big circles. Whoops, this eye is clearly bigger than the other one. <laughs> But that's fine. It doesn't matter. I'm just practicing, playing with eyes, drawing the eyes. Just practicing. There's nothing, there's no wrong. They're all right, right? So those are kind of similar, but just a little bit more circular, right? And they're looking up at the other eyes. Now I have two, and I like to work in threes, so I think I'm going to do one more set, and I think I'm going to put them like up here, okay? So let's do... Um, what do I want to do? We'll do like really long, narrow eyes, like, I don't know. I'm not good at doing a lot of different things. They all end up looking the same, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm going to do this, put another eye here, and even if they're all the same, that's fine too. I mean, it's, it's a really good practice, right? Okay, and then long and narrow, like almond-shaped, kind of, with a little something on the end there. I don't know what that is, but it looks cute. Okay. Another thing, if you're just doing this for the first time, too, uh, something that might help you um, feel a little bit easier about getting started, use pencil. You know, that, that eye is not great. <laughs> but that's okay. I don't care. Um, so there's my three eyes. I'm going to just be good with that. And I like that I drew eyes going the opposite direction. Now if we look at my piece like this, my journal page, that's fun, right? Totally. Super fun. 
You could even do little eyes like a dot, right? Let's see. I don't know. I mean, look, those are eyes, right? Who cares? Doesn't matter. Now I need one more over here. Sorry. Okay, let's do little ones. I'm going to do the same as I did on the other side. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay, so now I've got eyes all over the place, and they're super fun. And I drew some, and we did some magazine. And that's it. Um, so I don't really care about having a particular focal point. I think if I had to pick something that was, it's this guy right here. It's the biggest. It's the most different. Um, but eyes in general are the focal point of any... Uh, or, or face because it's it's so familiar and known to, to humans um, because we all have them um, that it people's eyes are generally drawn toward a, a person's face or eyes but since this whole thing is eyes and a face you're like okay well now what stands out and so that's kind of how the focal point is determined um, in this layout so then maybe I could do some doodling um, actually I kind of want to well let's see yeah I'll use the Posca and I didn't shake it first. You always want to shake your Posca first and I would even say uh, I'm going to use the back of my card here and just give it a like a a prime you know you could even just do it in your journal I guess. Um, prime it up before you start using it. So I'm just gonna I'm only gonna put this around my focal point so it stands out a little bit more. And I'm putting the scribbles right over that paper. Okay. And then I'm also going to dry it real quick. Whoops. And then I'm going to go over it with the black as well. I like, I like doing the two different colors. And even if you had other colors of Posca, um, or, or other markers or pens or crayons or whatever. Um, it's kind of fun to do a couple layers and do them in different colors. It just, I don't know, it's just fun and it's um, kind of, yeah, I don't know. I like it. <laughs> that's what it is. So that's it. I think I like this journal page. Um, I like playing with the eyes and sort of experimenting with different ones. And, um, and I like the color and the style in the background. So there we go. This is our eye, our shape prompt of eyes for week three of Art Journal Adventure. I cannot wait to see your uh, pages in the group. If you haven't joined the Facebook group yet, please do and start sharing. We would love to see your makes. And uh, thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.